Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come. In three, look, look, two, look, look, one. Hi, and welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth. Look, the greatest show. Yeah. Yes, in the multiverse. Bang! Greatest show in the multiverse. We have a great show for you. Bang! Today. Yes, we do. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. I guess it's Saturday technically now. It's 2.51 in the morning. But look, settle down. All right. We have a great show for you today. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of chilies. NBA. LA Clippers are going to partner with Socios. So it's not the usual Socios stuff. So it's not the usual fan token stuff. But I mean, a partnership is a partnership and generating revenues, generating revenues. We're going to talk about it. And then, bang. So this is a little weird. And we're going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to yap long, but there's going to have to be some yap yap about this one. Vanek and ProShares have retracted their ETF applications from the SEC here in America. They applied, and now they said, no, 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 we're going to take them off. So we're going to talk about that. And then finally, BlackRock uh, has $384 million in Bitcoin mining firms and other Bitcoin investments. I'm going to talk about that because that's how the big players are rolling. You notice George Soros. So we're going to talk about that when we get there. I'm not going to talk about it now. And then the shout outs and daily summary as per usual so look let's begin how we begin with the Dagon Var look look Var let me do a little bit of refresh a little bit of refresh all right we got here Price of Bitcoin, $48,698. And when I left you yesterday, we were at $47,080. So we've gone up $1,618. Bah! Nice. All right, look, look, let's look at the top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. Dag on usual suspects. Look at Cardano, still holding on the number three. All right, top 10 of the day. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, Binance Coin, Tether, XRP, Dogecoin, Polkadot, USD Coin, and Solana still holding on on the number 10. Holy, holding on the number 10, and look at them, 11% up today. Bang. Holding on the number 10 and still powering more. <laughs> That's how I'd say that. And still powering more. Oh, yeah. All right, look, let's look at the, uh, oh, market moves of the day. Let's look at market moves of the day, folks. Single this up, single this down. And look at Solana, though. They're like, yeah, we took the number 10, and we still got more work to do. That's how you do it, brothers. Just get down to work. Just put your heads down and get down to work. You go get a beer later. You get down to work, boy. Look, they're getting down to work. Polygon. Bang! 10% up. Finally. I know. It's not your fault, Polygon. We're here with dumb money. We're here with dumb money. <laughs> you should have. With all the fucking with all the fucking onboardings and shit I've read. Oh, my gosh. It should be way more than this. Guys, you're, you're not going to understand. You'll see. You'll see when smart money gets here. Okay? Like, really starts pouring in, like, on a proper level. Fuck. Fuck. Right? I read you the other day. Well, I read you yesterday, Polygon, the DAO thing. All right. All right. But I read you that other, poly I mean, I've read you Polygon things all year, right? And almost every day that I read something, it's down that day. I mean, for fuck's sakes. I mean, you know, fuck. <laughs> Sucking cult members in weak hands, you know, just crazy. I, you know, I've never seen, you know, as a market guy, I, I've never seen any sort of, just sort of crazy shit like this. I'm not even a stock market guy. I'm a Forex guy, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> All right, Avalanche. 
Look at you, 19% up. Holy, look at them. They're up 133% on the week. Oh, yeah. All right, so go this up, so go this down. 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 Two, so go this up, two, so go this down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything here? Like, go get it because it is on sale. Bang. Where's my bang at? Where the fuck the price is? Oh, there we go. There we go. Sales are skimpy. All right, top 10 losers. Voyager token, Audius, The Graph, Celsius, Amp, Cosmos, Swissborg, Terra, Thorchain, and Cardano. Let's see who made money today. Bye. Top 10 gainers. Yes, nice gains indeed. Top 10 gainers. Avalanche, Bitcoin Gold, Telcoin, Shinfin Network, Solana, Polygon, Icon, Kusama, Pancake Swap, and Digibyte. All right, let's see what the total mark cap is. Bang, all right, still, still above two trillion. Nice. All right, so total mark cap is $2.095 trillion. When I left you yesterday, we were at $2.033 trillion. So we've gone up. 0.062, excuse me, hiccups, <laughs> trillion dollars. All right, let's look at the 24 hour volume. Oh, yeah. All right, it's still above 100 grand, but sorry, 100 billion, but down from yesterday. So we were at, so we are at 111.4 billion dollars in 24 hour volume. When I left yesterday, we're at 112.8 uh, in 24-hour uh, volume. So we have gone down uh, $1.4 billion, which is negligible. All right, let's get to the stories. But what we got here? But NBA's LA Clippers partners with Socios, but we're not for fan tokens. So this is not a fan token thing. But... Uh, who cares? I mean, it still makes generates revenue, doesn't it? So <laughs> that's all that matters to me. That's all that I'm here to tell you about is who's making that money. All right, so let me let me blow this up a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, can you guys see this? All right. All right. NBA team, you know, that's the National Basketball Association here in America. For those of you who are not into sports. NBA team LA Clippers have signed a partnership with blockchain platform Socios.com. So you know that Socios.com is Chili's. So there's a, a blockchain called Chili's. And this is their blockchain. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. This is their website that they have that when they do stuff with sports teams, the sports teams are on this thing called Socios.com. You get it, right? You know what I mean? Um... All right, so look, the basketball team will use the Socios app for a for fan engagement and rewards, but there are no plans for a fan token at this stage. Socios will gain exposure through the Clippers' social media platforms and hospitality experiences as part of the deal. So people are going to still get to do stuff through this, but they're not going to get like Juventus and Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona. In Europe, you know, those soccer teams, you know, where it's a full fan token. You can actually buy the tokens. There, You can buy and sell them on exchanges and all that. And it's not like that. This isn't like that. You're going to be on socials, but, um, you know, it's going to be different. So in the sports industry, blockchain-based solutions focused on enhancing fan engagement are becoming widespread. Of the available offerings, non-fungible tokens and fan tokens stand out. Right, like the other fan tokens that they have, uh, Chili's slash Socios have, right, that people get actually to vote. Like, for instance, if uh, 
Barcelona, it's a soccer team in Europe. It, they're big, they're big, they're super famous. It's like saying the LA Lakers here in, in America for the NBA or the are the the Dallas Cowboys, you know, they're you know, the premier, one of the premier teams, you know what I'm saying? And with them, they have this thing, they're on socios with Chili's, but you can the people actually get to vote on what color jerseys they're gonna wear wear next year next uh, sorry, next game. Yeah, they let them vote on that. All right, you want us to wear the red jersey? Bang, we wear the red ones. <laughs> right? Like that. I think they're Barcelona is stripes, isn't it? It's like red and purple or something. But um, whatever. Like they get to actually choose things for their team to do. Uh, like that. Like what color jersey you want us to wear this week? And just little things. I mean, and, and like like I've said, you know, like I'm not like I I'm a sports fan. In other words, I like sports a lot. I watch every sport. You know, I watch everything: tennis, golf, NBA, football. Fuck, even in playoff time, I watch baseball, Dagon. But um, you know, there's there's fans out there. You know, you got. I'm sure you probably have friends that are like super fans of a team. You know what I mean? They know everything about every player. They know who the management is. They know who the coaches are. They know, you know, fuck everything, right? Super fans, right? And so, uh, that's what makes Chile so amazing. Is that, well, every country in the world has sports. <laughs> I always say this when I talk about Chili's. Every country in the world has sports. Well, and every sports has to have teams. <laughs> you have to compete. So you have to have teams. And every team has fans. I don't give a fuck how shitty that team is. I guarantee you, when they're playing at home, the stadium is full. Yeah. Everybody in the stadium knows these motherfuckers are about to lose. Yeah, but they show up anyway, don't they? <laughs> They fucking they show up anyway, man. And so, look, that's how it works in sports and people in life, you know. People want something to do so bad, fuck it. I'll just watch my home team get their ass kicked. Let's go. <laughs> I wouldn't tolerate that. All right, so look. All right, that's a little bit of yap yap for me. So while NFTs are a kind of digital collectible, fan tokens are closer to mainstream cryptocurrencies. Although they provide fan engagement... Stuff is, such as voting on club decisions. Right, that's what I'm saying. Club decisions, like literally, what color do you want our, our players to wear this week? Yeah, we want them to wear the blue jerseys. It's good luck. All right, and then, yeah, the team will wear that. But also, let, let, let's get real about real fan engagement, though. Fan engagement is like, you know, you can put your, you can put your tokens up and be entered in a, a lottery for, you know, some Lionel Messi shoes. Oh, speaking of Lionel Messi... You know, Lionel Messi, he's going to Paris Saint-Germain. Ah, Paris Saint-Germain, guess what? Bang! Is on this Socios blockchain. Uh, the Chili's blockchain on the Socios uh, platform. Yeah, you might have heard that uh, Lionel Messi might be getting paid in some cryptocurrencies. Yeah, that's because he's on this thing. Yeah, he's with Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain is part of uh, the Socios network of teams, if you want to call it that, right? All right, all right, look, let's, let's move on. All right. So given the uncertain level, sorry, given the uncertain legal position of cryptocurrencies in the United States, this may be why, why, why no NBA teams plan to launch fan tokens yet. Exactly, and that's what I told you guys a few months ago. That's what I think is going on. They're all signing up to sort of put the Socios logo on their jerseys. Um, they're putting the Socios logo in their stadiums. But they won't actually do the fan token part because they don't know if it's legal for them, right? Like in, in, in Europe, a team, a soccer team is allowed to do whatever they want to make money. Yeah, here in America, it's not allowed like that. They're not allowed like that. Like here in America, you have what's called, you know, salary caps and all sorts of shit, you know. Um, so you're not just allowed to do that. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a master at sports finance, so I don't really know. But I've noticed that is that. The sports teams that are here so far. Oh, it says right here. So let's just read it. Hold on. Maybe I should read first and then talk sometimes. All right. <laughs> this may be why we don't need that. All right. So nonetheless, Socios has linked deals with several NBA teams, including the Houston Rockets, Sacramento Kings, Cleveland Cavaliers, and the 76ers. Right. All of those teams are on Socios, but you can't buy fan tokens with them. Or, sorry, from it. 
from the Socio Cafe. Yeah, they're not offering fan tokens. And I think it's like they have controls over the money of these sports teams or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, over the past couple of months, the number of NFT platforms operating in the sports industry increased significantly. On the other hand, there are far fewer fan token platforms. Socios was one of the first to launch at the end of 2019 and remains one of few. If the deals are exclusive, being the first big player in the sector gives Socios a first mover advantage as no other platform will be able to license the clubs and, and leagues in its network. We're not aware of any sports team with multiple fan tokens contracts, while a few clubs and leagues operate more than one NFT project. So what they're saying there is, you know, no, there. Once you, once you, once a, a team chooses to be on your thing for fan tokens, yeah, well, you're exclusive. You know, they can't go on some other thing and do a fan token thing and another thing and do a fan token. No, you're the exclusive. Whereas with the NFTs, um, they can go on multiple platforms, right? So Socios has been able to sign over 50 major sports club in its network, including, so and this is what I'm talking about here, including top football teams such as, bang, there it is, PSG, Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah, that's the city that, uh, eh, what's the fucking guy's name? Messi, Lionel Messi. Yeah, he's about to go there. So uh, such as PSG, Arsenal, and Manchester City. In the last seven months, the platform increased its roster of partnerships by more than 30. Oh, we didn't read all those. I wish they had they had shown us all those. I would have read them. Anyways, the company says Socials has generated more than $150 million in revenue from sports teams in 2021. Bye. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was that? What, what's this channel about? It's here to show you who is what. Bah! Generating revenue. See what I'm saying? Generating revenue. When smart money gets here, <laughs> they're not buying dog shit. They're not buying shit on an ICO on a white paper and a, a website. They're going to look at the books and see who's making money. Let's look. Socios. Chili's. Revenue generating. All right, revenue generating. All right, so the partnership with the Clippers. Can likely be attributed to Socio's effort to penetrate the top American sports leagues. Of course it is. They want to be first with the best. All right, so this guy says, at the Clippers, our fans come first. And our, and our relationship with Clipper Nation is built around engaging seamless interactions with fans at every touch point, said Scott Sonnenberg, Chief Global Partnership Officer at the LA Clippers. Socios.com is a global fan engagement leader. And like us, they understand how technology and innovation drive the sports industry forward. In March, Socios creator Chili's said, so that's the name of the token, is actually Chili's. That runs this Socios thing. Said it would invest $50 million to expand its outreach into the United States. Since then, it has announced a partnership with NHL team, the New, Jer New Jersey Devils, and several other NBA teams. Meanwhile, Socios' main competitor, Bitsy, is the licensee for F1 team McLaren's fan token. Top Turkish football team Fenerbach uh, launched its product with crypto trading platform Padebu. And that was last week, the Turkish thing. Anyways, though, so bang! Socios still, so again, it's not the fan token thing. But, uh, and like I said, I think there's some sort of financial um, thing here in America where I'm not sure if these teams, like these teams are allowed to make money off of like jersey sales and, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. But I think there's a little gray area right now. Well, it said it. I mean, the article said it. You know, there's sort of a gray area about crypto right now here in America. We're not licensed. I mean, we're not regulated yet. And so there's no regulatory clarity yet. And so these teams don't want to 
<clears throat> they want fan engagement, but they're not jumping onto the whole fan token part because they don't know if they're allowed to do that yet. But like I said, once we get regulatory clarity, bye. Well, obviously, they're all just going to launch fan tokens, and they're already on Socios. So Socios is already making money from these teams. Uh, just, yes, well, not the mega, not the mega money that's going to happen when they actually release these fan tokens, and these fan tokens are allowed to be exchanged on, well, exchanges, right? All right, so there you go. Chili's Hotel Lewis. Bye. Let's move on. Bang, Van Eck and ProShares apply to withdraw Ethereum ETF filings from SEC. So, <clears throat> this is the one I wanted to talk to you about. This is a little strange. This is a little strange. Last week, Gary Gensler said, look, I might be down with uh, approving an ETF that has crypto futures contracts in it. Well, here in America, there's only two cryptos that are legal, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So everyone who filed for their Bitcoin uh, ETFs with futures contracts in it. But then Vanek and ProShares also applied for ETFs with um, Ethereum futures contracts in them. Yeah, but then they both withdrew their, their applications all of a sudden. Now, look, this is just me talking, okay? I'm just going to talk, and I'm not saying I know the answer or anything, but I really am not really yapping. I'm really asking myself a question. Why? Why? When Gensler said he's down, well, he didn't say he's down, but he said he looks forward to uh, his staff uh, looking at uh, crypto ETFs with futures in it, which means he's down for it, right? And, and so... Um, and so these guys, they all came out, we read about them, they all came out with their Bitcoin ETF applications last week, but they also came out with two Ethereum, Vanek and ProShares, last week, and then and then pulled them back. So, like, I'm not saying I know the answer or anything, but why are you pulling back your, ET, your Ethereum ETFs, but not your Bitcoin ones? Did you hear something? You know what I mean? There's someone saying something like, you know... Like, this is just me talking now. I'm not saying this happened. I'm just saying, though, but are you hearing, like, well, they're down with the Bitcoin ones, but the Ethereum we have a little problem with and da-da-da or something. Because they both pulled, well, it says right here, they both withdrew them, whoops, withdrew their applications. And, well, making an application with the SEC, like I told you yesterday, well, it ain't cheap. It's millions of dollars. It ain't fucking just going to the DMV and filling out your name and address and, Giving them 25 bucks, it doesn't work like that. Fuck, I'd have an Ethereum fund if I could, <laughs> if it were that easy. You know what I mean? Like, So anyway, that's just what I want to say. Just something to think about. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I'm not saying that I do know the answer. I'm just saying it's kind of funny that they both applied for Ethereum futures contract ETFs last week. And both of them retracted them, withdrew them this week. All right, so let's read it. Less than two days after submitting separate applications to the United States Security Exchange, right, two days after, right? It wasn't, it's not even like, well, you know, like Vanek, Vanek removed their, ET, their ETF application uh, last year, or sorry, sorry, this year, Q1 this year, right? Because they knew that Jay Clayton was going to deny them, right? So they removed it. Yeah, but they had the application in for over a year. Right, they applied for this thing just then. Look at this. It says less than two fucking days. What did you hear that makes you retract your your uh, your ETF application? You know what I mean? That's strange. All right, so it is what it is. All right, so less than two days after submitting separate applications to the SEC, asset manager Van Eck and ProShares have seemingly decided not to pursue exchange traded funds with exposure to ether. In individual Friday filings with the SEC, legal representatives of Vanek and ProShares both said uh, the firms had elected not to proceed with registering their respected Ethereum-based exchange-traded funds. All of a sudden, right? Less than 24, uh, 48 hours later. Vanek, was it 48 or 24? Two days, yeah, 48. 
Um, Vanek had submitted filing to launch an Ethereum strategy ETF with the SEC on Wednesday, while ProShares applied for an ETF strategy ETF on the same day. So Wednesday, it is now Saturday morning at 3 a.m. And they pulled them already. So both products had seemingly aimed to provide exposure to Ethereum or Ether by investing in futures co contracts as well as pooled investment vehicles and other exchange-traded products. It's unclear why both asset managers... These fucking hiccups. It's unclear why both asset managers chose to apply for and withdraw seemingly similar applications for Ether ETFs on the same days. But the two firms said they had... Holy hiccups like crazy. They had not sold any securities connected to the potential offering. <coughs> SEC Chairman Gary Gensler said earlier this month uh, that he would be more open to accepting ETFs based on crypto futures rather than through direct exposure, spot market. At that time, Vanek already had a Bitcoin and Ether exchange traded funds under review by the agency but the company later filed a, a separate prospectus for a Bitcoin strategy ETF. A fund with exposure through the Bitcoin future, futures contracts rather than spot market. So, and so that's what they're saying. Like, look, earlier this month, uh, big brains, Gensler, he said like, yeah, you know, I'm down with, he didn't say he, he's down with, but he said, I'm open to looking at, which is, government speak for yeah i think i'll probably approve any etf that has uh cme chicago chicago mercantile exchange futures in it and so these guys all rushed i i read to all the bitcoin ones and then i read to you these ethereum ones but for some reason they're pulling their their ethereum ones vanek and pro shares are both pulling their ether their ether holy man this hiccups is getting crazy withdraw their ETF filings from the SEC. And so I wonder why, like, what are they hearing? Like, wh you know, what, what's that about? And so I'm just saying, I don't know. Like, I'm not giving you an answer or, any or anything. Uh, just, but it's interesting that both of them pulled those, fi those filings. All right, well, let's move on. Bang, BlackRock ETFs hold 384 million of shares in Bitcoin mining firms. So, SEC filings, so let's look at the byline. SEC filings reveal that Black, BlackRock has invested almost $400 million into Riot blockchain and Marathon digital holding stock. So, oh my gosh, these hiccups are killing me. And so I brought this one up because uh, this reminds me of the Soros thing, right? The Soros fund is coming into crypto, but they're not investing in crypto directly. Like, Sor Soros fund is not buying Bitcoin. Fuck, and they could buy all the Bitcoin on earth if they felt like it. <laughs> uh, what they're doing is, or, or so not just Bitcoin or any crypto, sorry, not yet, yet, yet. So let's use that word, yet. But for right now, Soros is investing in companies that service the, the Bitcoin industry, like custody services, insurance service, like all the infrastructure that, well, makes a market a market. That's what Soros is investing in, but they're not investing dr directly in Bitcoin. And so, uh, and that's what BlackRock is doing here. They're investing in the big, the Bitcoin mining companies, but not the Bitcoin itself. Right? Holy shit. These fucking hiccups. And so that's why I'm reading to you. This is just to show you that these big mega masters, I mean, and you all know about BlackRock, Black, BlackRock is the mega of the mega. They are the biggest asset manager on earth. I don't know, like $10 trillion, $8 trillion under management, something like that. Uh, yeah, they, make, they make even Fidelity look small, you know what I mean? And Fidelity is a monster. And so, uh, and so if Fidelity is a monster, well, this thing, BlackRock is a... Uh, I don't know, just some intergalactic creature, 
creature. Hmm. All right, so you get what's going on here. Oh, and sorry, and I guess why I'm bringing it up is also because if these guys are investing in the periphery of crypto, you know, and uh, sort of, they're not buying the crypto itself, but they're buying the foundations of the crypto market. Well, that means they believe the crypto market's going to be here and growing. Right? Here and growing. Um, all right, so that's that. Okay, so filing submitted by the, oh, it's $9 trillion. Yeah, BlackRock, $9 trillion. $9 trillion, asset manager. Bang, BlackRock. T, trillion. That's almost half of the American GDP. Right, our GDP last year was 19 point, 19 point something. Yeah, well. The rule of the firm has made significant investments in two leadingly publicly traded Bitcoin mining firms. On June 30th, oh, a June 30th filing, well, sorry. Submitted to the to the U.S. SEC, unearthed by Forbes, shows that BlackRock owns six point seven one percent in stake in Marathon Digital Holdings and six point six of six point six of Riot Blockchain. In total, the investments are valued at nearly thirty sorry three hundred eighty four million million dollars with BlackRock having purchased nearly $207 million worth of Marathon stock and $176 worth of Riot stock. According to, e e uh, sorry, according to ETF .com, BlackRock's iShares Russell 200 ETF holds more shares in Marathon and Riot than any other exchange-traded fund, while iShares Russell 2000 value ETF ranks third on, this, on the same measure. See, and that's what they're doing, right? They do have an ETF, just like Soros has that ETF, right? But they're not; their ETFs are not based on the coins, tokens, whatever you want to call them, right? Like, we keep reading to you about shit like this, right? Like, sorry. We keep reading to you about shit like, you know, but, what, but, right? These guys are investing in the actual crypto itself, right? This is an actual Ethereum ETF, right? Through a futures contract, but st but still, you're being exposed to the actual price of the underlying asset, which is the Ethereum. Whereas Soros, sorry guys, I'm hiccuping like crazy. But I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep doing this because I got gotta get this over with. All right. So and um, right, these guys are investing in Soros and, and BlackRock, and that they're investing in the infrastructure of the crypto market. The infrastructure, because, well, it's smart. I invest in a custodian that that custodies Bitcoin right now. Yeah, well, when the rest of this stuff gets it gets uh, regulated, well, where are they? Gonna, they're going to custody all the rest of it, right? And so it's a smart play, a great play. Um, who knows? I wish I had the money to make a play like that. So look. Uh, the investments are not BlackRock's first in the digital asset sector, with the firm filing for an application with the SEC in January for two of its funds to purchase cash settle Bitcoin futures contracts before revealing in April that its BlackRock Global Allocation Fund had bought 37 Bitcoin futures contracts for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. With few, with few products offering institutional inv investors regulated, remember the word, regulated offering the institutions regulated exposure to the crypto markets in the United States bitcoin mining stocks have become an increasingly popular investment in recent years so that's the problem these guys want regulated stuff it let's talk like adults regulated investment vehicles to purchase so that they can have uh, exposure in their portfolio in their portfolio to the bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market but they can't because we don't have investment vehicles yet um, well, the type that they want, right? Like if I'm an options trader, well, there are no options Bitcoin things yet. So I can't get here, right? Uh, you know, that's how it works. And so that's what they want. 
So look, while Bitcoin is up nearly 287, 88% over the past 12 months, Marathon Stock Exchange 754 and Riots has gained 848%. Bang! So you, you see, now that people know that the infrastructure is being built, sorry, 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 let me put another. Now that they know that the infrastructure is going to be necessary because crypto is going to be a real asset class for real, real, yeah, Marathon and Riot, They've gained way more than Bitcoin, right? All right, so look. Fidelity Group and Vanguard Group are among the large firms obtaining significant exposure to the Bitcoin mining sector in recent months. Vanguard's total stock market ETF and information technology ranks as the fourth and fifth largest funds by Riot Holdings. While the firm small cap ETF and small cap growth ETF are the fourth and fifth... Eh, Large CTF holdings of Mara shares. ETF.com. All right, whatever, man. Look, that was a bunch of bullshit. All right, so look, but let's get back to BlackRock. Who gives a fuck about that other shit? So, bye. And that's how BlackRock's rolling. That's how Soros is rolling. They're investing in the infrastructure of this place. Right? And, which is smart. Why, why buy an individual crypto? Why buy Ethereum, Singularity Net, Chainlink, you know, Polygon, when I can buy the shit that's going to hold those things, right? The custody is going to cust custody those things forever and ever and ever, right? So why buy the one coin when I can buy the custody that's going to custody them all? That's, that's genius. And that's why Soros and BlackRock, well, that's why they're Soros and BlackRock, because they look at things, bah! You know, genius. Oh, yeah. Right? They they know crypto is going to be a thing. All right. So I'll just invest in all the custody things for this thing. <laughs> right? Fuck the little coins themselves because coins come and go. But the custody is here forever. The cust well, will we'll be here forever. Right? Here for fucking ever. So why take a chance? that I invest in this coin and it doesn't work, or I invest in that coin and it doesn't work, I'll just invest in the fucking straight infrastructure of the pl of the place. Yeah, well, I make money no matter who goes up, up or down, right? I make money no matter who, who, who wins or loses, who's successful or not. Yeah, that's the beauty. When you, when you have money like those guys, right, you just invest in the industry infrastructure. Fuck investing in any particular coin. I mean, not that they won't, you know, I, I, but why bother? I've invested in the infrastructure of it. All right. So look, let's move on. You understand, you understand what I'm saying though, right, guys? Why invest in the crypto when I can invest in the custody that's going to hold all that crypto? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care. One, one crypto is good today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, well, the custody is still here and growing, right? So, bye. All right, let's move on. Look, what we got here. Bam! Connected, connecting the dots. Love it, see, but the bar. Hold on, guys. I gotta hold on. My hiccups. These are killing me, man. Hold on. I gotta pause this for a second. One sec. Bah. All right, I'm back. All right, let's see. If these hiccups are gone now. It's hard talking to you guys. I'm trying to talk to you, and they, you know, hiccups just hit you. So I'm in the middle of a word, and you know, it's crazy. So I had to just pause there for a second and just let those things go away. I don't know if it's gone, but let's see. So far, so good. All right, so Binium, connecting the dots. Love you with the Zebra, the bar. See me news, what Binium? Crypto.com partners with Italian Football League, City A. For what? Oh. All right, well, I'll look at that. I don't know what you mean there. Or for what? What that's for? I mean, for what? You know, to do what? All right, love you with the Zebra. Wait. Oh. Love you with the Zebra, the bar. And then. Bang! Son of a bitch! Look at this motherfucker! Look! Look! Son of a bitch! Look! Look! Bang! Look! Look! Bang! Look! Look! Bang! Got you wrong, kids! Son of a bitch! Ha ha ha! Got you again, brother. Love with the sea, brother. No savior. Bang! All right. There we go. We got it here. Luke Banks. Love with the sea, brother. Bang! 
Robbie Hardaway. All right, we're just going to do a regular Robbie Hardaway tonight. No, I don't know where he... Not yet. Robbie Hardaway, love with you, brother. He's been here so long, though, that it's in black and white. Bye. Can't do one every night. Can't do one every night. It doesn't make it fun anymore. <laughs> Bitcoin Kong, love you, brother. <laughs> wow. Love you, brother. Bye. Right? It's got to be on special occasions, right? All right. Universal Mr. Throat, holding down the insurgency in Central Europe. Love you, brother. Bye. Grunchable, grunchable. <laughs> Why did you get angry at me? Were you angry at me when you said, don't say that you live near the thing? The post office. Why? I do, and I'm waiting for the package. Love with the seat with the bye. <laughs> that was a little weird today. I didn't know. I was like, is Grunchable like actually angry at me or something or what? Well, it's not my fault. I live right here. Deep Entertainment. So, brother. Love with the seat with the bye. Andrew Richeda, the enforcer. What you trying to sell, homeboy? Bye. Settle down. Look. Settle down. But I want to sell him, Mr. Richeda. Now's not the time, brother. Bye. Now's not the time. Huddle. Because the juice is worth the squeeze. Tell him, Andrew. Love with the zebra. Bye. Look, look. Technically bullish. Love with the zebra. Bye. Red scanner. Love with the zebra. Bye. All right. Look, look. There's Miguel G. Started his account just to follow me. Live with the Zebra, though. Bye. All right, that's everyone. Oh, CB News. Yes, BDM what? CB News. Yes, BDM. CB News. DM has secured licenses in nearly all 50 states, says board member. I know. I know. And, you know, there's this DM thing. I'm not going to bullshit you. I mean, I mean, obviously, Facebook is big. So, so if people don't know what this is, this is Facebook is coming out with its own cryptocurrency, and it's called DM, this thing right here. Yeah, that's Facebook money. Facebook is coming out with its own, you know, privately issued money, you know, like a, like a Monero or a, any of the rest of these fucking things, right? And, um, well, uh, Obviously, governments around the world are sort of freaking out because, <laughs> you know, obviously Facebook has, you know, not millions of customers, not hundreds of millions of customers, but billions of customers worldwide. And if they start using this thing, you know, what will be the ramifications for, you know, the regular market and stuff? No one knows. I mean, no one, obviously, no one's ever done that, right? So... Uh, and so anyway, so, and so, so everyone's worried, right? And so, um, they have got almost licensed in all 50 states in America. And, um, I guess they're going to use it across its platforms, right? Like not just on Facebook, but some other shit they own, right? They own a couple other little, uh, app things, right? And so. It's going to be quite amazing. Yeah, man, I'm interested. And actually, I read an article uh, yesterday where one of the board members said that they're going to actually launch the, the they, well, so first of all, they have a wallet for this thing. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but say it's called, you know, XYZ wallet. They say their XYZ wallet is ready and it's up to regulatory standards, uh, you know, I don't know about worldwide, but around a lot of the world. And um, and they're going to launch this DM thing, their coin. Remember, that was the thing that was called um, Libra, right? Remember, it was called Libra. Well, this is the same thing. This is it. That Libra coin thing, this is it. It's called DM. They just changed the name. And so uh, I'm interested to see what happens. I'm interested, <laughs> I'm interested to see what happens. You know, all these little other coins... Little stable coins and bullshit, you know. Yeah, we're gonna be some money. We're gonna, yeah, yeah. All right, fuck off. But something like Facebook, like what's interested is because what 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 interests me about it is because well, they already have billions of users around the world, and so, uh, you know, they've already got their market built in. 
they already own those people if you kind of want to look at it as ownership or kind of in that way, right? And so, whereas all these other coins, stablecoin, Monero, you know, Zcash, and all, you have to convince people to like your shit, right? Whereas Facebook, you'll just be like, hey, here's a new feature on Facebook, and people are like, hey, great, great, and they'll just do it, right? <laughs> a lot of them, you know, a lot of them will just do it. Just, oh, great, a new feature, right? And so that's what amazes me, or what, not amazes, uh, the word's not amazes, uh, it's not the word, but what intrigues me and sort of, um, you know, just has me curious and excited to see this thing, <laughs> to see this thing go down. I'm curious to see this thing go down. Like, uh, and, uh, you know, as you can see right here, it says they've been regulated in nearly all the states in America anyway. So it's definitely not going to be banned. Not here in America, but I'm sure. Look, I'm excited. I want to see if any country just does ban this shit. Like, no, you can't. You can't. You know, or something. There's going to be, in other words, you know, look, I'm a market guy. You guys know that. And I love the drama of the markets. You know, I love the drama. You know, the fucking, the, the, the central bank of, of, of India bans crypto. Yeah, and the crypto people take them to court and the cent, uh, and, and then, and then the, uh, the, uh, what do you call that? The high court. What do you call that shit? The Supreme Court in India said, nah, you're not allowed to ban them. Bye. Right? All this awesome stuff happens all the time. And so I'm really excited to see this thing launch. Um, just to see what the fuck happens. <laughs> I want to see what happens. It's kind of like, all right, I'm not going to say that, but you know, just sometimes you just want to see like, what would happen if this did happen? Well, it's about to happen. So let's see Facebook. All right. That's enough about Facebook. All right. Bye. And his Zuck bucks. Fire buddy. V Thor. Whatever. All right. Wait. So fire buddy. Love and see you for the bong. I haven't seen you for a while. Bang. Oh, this is what he's talking about. So VeChain Hodlers, this is the free VPunk giveaway contest post. To enter the contest, simply like this post, retweet this post, tag a friend in the comments, and follow me. In 24 hours, I will draw a winner from my hat. Good luck. It's so funny. These people buy these eats, these NFTs. And they're purposely made to look like old, shitty, pixelated, you know, when we had the shitty pixels back, like, in Atari days. Anyway. Bunch of money laundering, that's all that is. All right. Bitcoin Kong? All right, let's finish up with Kong. The cream rises to the top. Yes, Kong. Yeah. Cardano? Oh, that's what Kong said. He said, Cardano, look, look. Because, because the, the cream rises to the top. Yeah. The cream rises to the top. That's how it goes, brothers. And that's why Cardano, I mean, look at the fucking tear that Cardano was on this week. Yeah, well, once the Japanese said, look, look, we'll let you list uh, Cardano. Well, let's actually look at Cardano right now. Let's take a quick peek. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, number three right now, $79 billion company. Dang, God. That's why I told you, like, you know, companies, every generation of new tech is 10 times bigger than the last, than the last one, right? I've went through this before, you know, uh, railroads came out, and then the combustible engine, cars came out. So those shares of those companies were 10 times bigger than railroads. And... And blah blah blah. It just goes like that. It goes like that. And so, look at Cardano. It's worth seventy nine billion dollars. Motherfuckers aren't even hardly doing anything yet, <laughs> and you're already worth that much money. So imagine when this smart contract thing comes out, and uh, just the other stuff they're doing. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but I mean that's how things work. Every new tech is uh surpasses the last tech by a lot all right by you know tens of times more all right so anyways that's enough for that uh but let's get back to the death star bang yes welcome back everybody welcome back welcome back everybody we had a great show for you bang today look 
So let's talk about them. Let's talk about the stories. Look, NBA's LA Clippers partner with Socios, and so it is a partnership with Socios, but they're not going to do the fan token part yet. And like I said, I think there's some legal something going on in American sports where they're not allowed to do it. Because remember, the Socios, when you do this Socios thing, this Chili's thing, Chili's slash Socios thing, the team actually earns money. And I'm not sure if the NBA just allows teams to earn money any way they want or any American sports team, right? Because they have what's called like salary caps and all this shit where they keep a hold of the money. Whereas you guys in Europe, fucking your sports teams are just throwing around fuck $100 million here, $100 million. Like it's, it's going out of style, right? You guys are just like, yeah, we're going to buy this guy. We're going to buy that guy. Fuck this. We're going to trade this guy for this much, trade these two for that much, and buy this guy for this much. Like, your your the European <laughs> the European version of soccer is more just like the team's own the, the the owners of the teams really get to use it like you know like an owner of a company just I can do what I want it's my fucking company it's my fucking team I can do what I want whereas here in America it's not like that you know the Kraft family you know Kraft. You know, uh, macaroni and cheese. You ever heard of you know, macaroni and cheese? Uh, well, they own the New England Patriots. Yeah, but they're not allowed to just do whatever they want with it, right? There's all these rules and and shit, right? Um, so that's what I think is going down in America. I can guarantee you uh, these sports team will be lobbying. Sports teams will be lobbying our politicians. Like I told you, election year is net right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> people want donations so i'm sure there'll be some lobbying going on and we'll see how long uh the nba just stays on the socials platform without the tokens or not we'll see we'll see i don't think very long i don't think very long <laughs> bye all right oh so i guess so what i want to say is chili's hodlers bye there's another one revenue generating don't be afraid to accumulate. I'm not saying go buy more, but wouldn't hurt, in my opinion. I just give you my opinion. Wouldn't hurt. All right, so enough of that. Vanek and ProShares retract their ETF app, their Ethereum ETF applications. So that is what is a little bit fascinating to me is Gary Gensler said that stuff about uh yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind some some Bitcoin futures contracts out of the CME and everyone, bang, 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 they all find, filed CME filled uh, futures contract ETFs, right? But then Vanek and, and ProShares, they were like, well, let's, let's do that with Ethereum. And they filed Ethereum futures contract ETFs, but then they retracted them. I mean, fuck, in less than 48 hours. Why? Why? Why, Shamari? I don't know why. That's what I'm asking. I want to know, did someone hear something? Or is something going to go on with Ethereum or something? Uh, some new regulatory something? Because you just applied for it and then you retracted it? That's a little odd. Right? And it's not just the one company. Like, if one company did it, you could say, oh, well, they're just a little nervous or whatever. But two, uh, Vanek and ProShares, they both applied last week. They both retracted their applications yesterday. Like, why? What did you guys hear that made you do that? Like I told you, like, an ETF application ain't cheap. Uh, you know, it ain't pocket change. <laughs> if it was, I'd have one. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't work like that. And so uh, I want to know why. What are they hearing? What? Why did they both do that? Remember, they're separate companies, but someone inside of Vanek, someone inside of ProShares said, look, we got to get the fuck out. We got to retract this thing. Well, because it's not going to get approved, obviously. I mean, that's the only reason you retract it is because you don't think you're going to get approval. And then you hold on to it to file it later, right? You can refile it later, right? You've already paid all these lawyers for it. You might as well. Just hold on to it and then refile it later. 
So I'd like to know what they heard that made them both retract their ETF, uh, Ethereum ETF filings. But anyways, in that, and that's what we are, the show's about. Well, partly what the show's doing is we keep a track of every ETF application and result here in America. And so that's why I'm reporting this. And uh, so, but yeah, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Binium, I know you're always out there connecting the dots. Find out why do they do this, Binium. Uh, Binium's a smarty pants. He digs around. Oh, yeah. Binium's like a truffle pig. Just digs around for the truffles. <laughs> yeah, and the truffles are expensive. Yeah, well, to find truffles, you need a truffle pig. Yeah. So you want due diligence, call it Binium. He's like a truffle pig. He'll figure it out. So, but seriously, guys. So, anyways, I'm just mentioning that and also just keeping you updated on the status of each application here in America. So, the Ethereum ones that I reported to you earlier this week, ah, you can forget about those now because they have been retracted. All right. Bye. And then finally, BlackRock, mega BlackRock. $384 million in Bitcoin mining firms. And so, like I said, like BlackRock is pulling a Soros. Um, of course you follow what Soros does. <laughs> of course. He's the master of masters. And so what Soros is doing, the Soros Fund is doing, well, it's called Quantum Fund, actually, is what his, his fund is called. What Quantum Fund is doing, but just for ease of use, I'll call it Soros Fund, just so you have it in your head. So what Soros Fund is doing is they're investing in stuff around the crypto industry, right? They're not investing in, like, Soros Fund is not buying Bitcoins. Nah, they're not buying that shit. They're buying things that are going to custody these Bitcoins. Ah, right? They're not a, in buying uh, uh, whatever, any of them, Ethereum, Singular, any of these. Yet, yet, yet. I mean, this is just the opening salvo. I mean, I'm sure these guys are going to get here and start getting nuts with it soon. But for now, they're investing the big monsters. I mean, the masters of masters, BlackRock, Soros. They're investing in what I've been preaching about here, the infrastructure of this place. The people who are going to insure this place. The people that are going to custody <laughs> this market. I mean, without custody, you have no market. Right? And so, I mean, I could see what they're doing. I mean, you see what they're doing. They're, this is what makes Soros and BlackRock Moss does. Soros is saying, fuck that. If I invest in that coin right there, maybe it goes under. I'm going to invest in the shit that's going to custody all of this. So whether some coin or not goes up or down or is good or bad or rug pulls or not, I don't give a fuck. My custody company is making me lots of money because new people are going to be getting custody, regulated custody soon. And so uh, that's super smart. Um, yeah, and so that's what they're doing. And so and that's what BlackRock is doing. So uh, we read that Soros is doing the custody angle, uh, investing in custody solutions. Well, not solutions, just custodians, man. Fuck, Let's stop talking like that. They're investing in custodians. And what BlackRock, well, this particular story is BlackRock is investing in Bitcoin mining firms. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be around forever. Well, at least, all 20, at least until all 21 million of them are mined. So, you know. Earn some chicken out these motherfuckers. And so that's what they're doing. And so uh, very interesting, right? Not investing in crypto directly, but in companies that service this whole industry and are actually going to be the industrial backbone of this industry going forward. And so that's why BlackRock is BlackRock with trillions of dollars under management. That's why Soros is Soros. Because he's a master of masters, right? And so, well, if I had the money and I was reading this story, well, guess what I would be doing? I'd be investing in custodians too. But I don't have that kind of money. But look, so anyways, that's how it goes. Uh, that's why Soros and BlackRock are Soros and BlackRock. Because they know where the money is going to be. <laughs> Believe that. All right, so on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Bye. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get on Mac notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. Look. In the multiverse. 
Look, my name is Shamar Clark. I love talking money. Bye. I love talking crypto. Bye. This is the favorite time of my day. So thanks for having me in your home, and I'll see you all tomorrow with another fun fact, fact-filled day of crypto talk. So until then, subscribe here so you can get the greatness and press the button, the little bell, and it'll inform you of the greatness occurring. And then watch that video there, Greatest in the Multiverse, and I'll see you all tomorrow. My name is Shamar Clark. Always watch your money, and more importantly, bye. I am always on duty. Bye. Yeah. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Over and out.